who was an awful person when they were alive, but everybody treats like a saint because they are dead? Coco Chanel was an artsy and anti-Semite. I think it's such poetic justice that the brand is owned by a Jewish family, the Worthemers. When she started her perfume line in the 20x, she got funding from this family. She tried to take ownership of the perfumes from them using Nazi laws, but they had already handed their businesses over to Gentile friends, so she wasn't able to. After she died, the Worthemers bought a controlling interest in the fashion line and it's still owned by their family. So the same people she tried to squeeze out of one part of her business using Nazi laws own the whole thing. Bit of a UK and India specific one but Jay Goody. She was famous for nothing other than being thick and racist. Then she died and everyone acted like she was a saint because it led to more people getting tested for cervical cancer. Charlie Chaplin is remembered pretty fondly but he repeatedly sexually assaulted teenage girls he worked with, even impregnating one. If I recall correctly the ages of known girls he assaulted was from about 12-16 and he was known to publicly talk about how much he liked young girls. Yikes. How come I'd never heard about this before? I've been showed a few skits of his in school and no one bothered to tell us that. All I knew about the guy was that he had the same moustache as Hitler. Because it's not so much learning about who Chaplin was, but more about how his character changed cinema. Just like the Beatles, they're revered as saints. But I forget who was a well-known wife beater. Elvis did the same sh**. Steven Tyler dated a 16 year old when he was in his mid 20s. Woody Allen is all over the place with underage conquests. More modernly, the A-hat who played Percy in the Green Mile, at 51 years old, married a 16 year old girl, with her parents consent. Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13 year old cousin at 22. R. Kelly, at 27. Illegally married Alia when she was 15. Paul Walker was 33 when he started dating a 16 year old. Seinfeld was 38 when he started dating a 17 year old. The shed who played Fez on that 70s show. In his late 20s 30s. Dated Demi Lovato and Lindsay Lohan when they were 17. And Mandy Moore when she was 16. On the flip side. Fergie was 23-24 when she dated a 16 year old Justin Timberlake. It goes both ways, but you certainly hear a lot more guys doing it than ladies. Bob F. I. Marley, poet and a prophet and gigantic a-hole, very violent toward his wife, sexually assaulted her, possibly the conception of one of his children, cheated like F, totally absent and unloving to his kids, Moody and Petty, immensely talented, along with the rest of the whalers, and their producers, and brilliant music, but massive doucher bag with posters. Shirts and murals all over the place. Came here for this. I worshipped him when I was a teenager and then read a ton of biographies. One of which by his own mother and ended up loathing him. Caroline Flack the media was so mean to her when she committed suicide. So sad. She also dated a 16 year old when she was in her 30s and beat one of her boyfriends with a lamp. Living in the UK this was something that irked me so much. Like yes okay she was a TV presenter that people liked. But she still abused her partner and suicide does not change that. My uncle, to give you an idea of the kind of man he was, he once profited off his friend's son dying. The guy was studying in England when he suddenly died. The father wanted to fly him back to his home country for the funeral. My uncle offered to make the arrangements for him. He looked up the price of the flights and gave the father that number. After he was given the money, he turned around and booked the cheapest possible flights for the body, taking several days longer than it should have and passing through a few random countries. He pocketed the excess cash. Now that he's dead it's all he was such a good businessman that helped so many people, completely ignoring the fact that he only helped people when it benefited him and for the most part he was a colossal piece of sh that even screwed his own family in the name of making a buck. Karma bit him in the A for that one. Though, because soon after he was diagnosed with cancer and never got to enjoy that money before he died, even his own kids hated him. There's a kid near where I live in the UK who's just died. He was 15 legal age to drive his 17. In a car crash because he was being chased by police after he broke into someone's house and stole their car and maybe other things. Yet there's messages all over social media saying he was such a nice, polite, kind boy. Course it's sad when someone so young dies but was he really that nice? Thomas Edison. I read Empires of Light a while back which talk about Edison, Tesla, 
and Westinghouse, one of the better historical reads and highly recommend. Also, Edison was a giant dickhole. I once read somewhere that the reason Tesla is so popular on Reddit is that is how every Redditor perceives themselves. The unfairly unrecognized genius. And everyone here has an Edison in their life that took everything away from them. Also Tesla's a virgin. I feel like the Edison pendulum has swung too far. Yes in elementary school he was praised too much, but now it's like most people think he was nothing but a scam artist, and at the same time, Tesla, who was never given enough credit in elementary school, is now held up like how Edison was, in reality, they were both great inventors, yeah, Edison did some shtai business tactics, but it doesn't take away from his inventions, and yes, Tesla was right on AC power, but no his plan for free, wireless electricity was not held back by corporate greed, it was quacky, pseudoscience. Elvis Presley. Elvis was a wonderful and game changing singer but as a person he was a creepy weird piece of sh. He liked girls who were uncomfortably young, constantly cheated on his wife, chased his living girlfriend around the house with a gun in a drugged out state, refused to touch his wife after the birth of their daughter the narrator when she complained about it. This is just some of the sh and weird things he did. Elvis is not a hero and definitely shouldn't be remembered as one. I read somewhere that he would get angry at women for finding out they smoked weed. He would tell them all about how terrible and unattractive drugs are. While he was addicted to drugs and considered himself some kind of exception. He hated illegal drugs. He had this false idea that if a doctor prescribed it, that it must be safe. Forget that he was already on dozens of prescription drugs. Gandhi. He barred his wife from taking western medication, penicillin, when she fell ill. She died and when he was sick later, he took the medication. Ferdinand Marcos, the former president of the Philippines who's responsible for so much corruption, chaos, and the country's overwhelming debt. The country was under martial law and would arrest dissidents and torture them. While a lot of Filipinos hate him, there's a surprising number of people that think that all the she did is justified because he established a refined railway system, some government agencies, and other random sh all while amassing a huge debt. Australia was on this 13 years ago the eulogy song, NSFW lyrics. John Lennon, he should definitely be remembered as a good musician, but as a person in general he was pretty awful, he was murdered 40 years ago today, I know because it was my 5th birthday and my birthday party sucked, happy birthday, totally agree, he was by no means a saint, although it seemed towards the end of his life. He was trying to make right from his mistakes, especially when it came to his relationship with his first son, which does make his death all the more tragic. He was realizing his mistakes, and trying to learn from them and fix them but was murdered just as he was attempting to. All you need is love. Imagine no possessions, he says as he sits in his lavish surroundings with the woman he ran out on his wife and family with. A very do as I say, not as I do kind of guy. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs' legacy hasn't changed much since he was alive. He was always known as an a-hole, and was even ousted from Apple back in the 80s. Back in the early zeros, 6th grade me did a book report on Steve Wozniak. It was well known even then what Jobs was really like. The thing is, Steve Jobs is also a genius, weird as f, and an a-hole, but a business genius. He didn't design products. But he did know what people would buy, and he was very good at the business side of it. There is a reason why pretty much everything he pushed out of Apple turned to gold. And you can track when he was with the company by how well he company was is doing, and how their products are received. I don't think his legacy has changed much since he died, at least not by people who know a little bit about the industry. Steve who? I remember reading an article comparing Jobs to Gates. It said in 50 years, no one will know who Jobs was. Maybe an obscure reference to founding Apple. Gates will be remember for what he did outside of Microsoft. There is a village in India that has a big Gates statue because of how he helped the village. This is very true. Bill Gates not only donates but also actively involves himself directly in philanthropic work. This sort of activity started because his wife started harassing him for not doing enough in the way of philanthropy. She's the one who should get most of the credit. There was a time when Bill was doing a whole lot and not much in that area. Johnny Boy Soprano. The second he died, Livia was all like oh he was a saint. Chuck Berry fell from grace a bit when he got caught peeping on women. 
but now that he's dead, people are overlooking his sexual deviance and focusing on his musical legacy. Also stole one of his most well-known songs from a time-traveling teenager. A guy who was a bully in general a-hole died two days ago and I have seen lots of posts on Facebook from his high school friends talking about a sweet and kind person he was. No, he was an fine a-hole. I am sure he was nice to his friends and family, but just a couple of things off top of my head. Threw a 40 bottle at my head with full strength and missed by less than an inch. It left a hole in the door of the shed it hit behind me. He did this unprovoked. Just happened to be at a party I was at and saw me walking by. Punched someone off their bicycle who was riding by minding their own business into a ditch and then proceeded to stomp on the spokes of their bikes. He especially didn't like me because I was the same size as him and not intimidated by his bullsh. I remember the party he threw the 40 bottle at my head he almost got stabbed by my friend who didn't back down until I told him it was okay. This dude was like 20 years old at the time I knew him by the way. Anyways I didn't wish death upon him. Especially not at this point in my life. But I do not mourn his passing beyond the hope that he had become a better person before his death. King Jellybean. Gandhi. Racist. Anti-Semitic. Pedophile. Wife beater sent his niece out to get him a pumice stone for his feet. Forcing her to walk through an area known for women being red and murdered and told her after that he would have been proud and happy had she been red. He was a piece of sh**, not some peaceful dude everyone should idolize. That explains him ending up in hell I guess. Source, the South Park movie. He also loves to nuke people. Maradona. There are videos of him beating his wife and he shooted at journalists. There is a video of him. During a football match. Assaulting a player with the clear intent to do as much damage as possible. He is famous. Here in Italy. For being a massive tax evaser. He was so proud of it that he laughed about it during an interview with a journalist. Fazio. And now he is treated as a saint when. In reality, he was just a piece of sh**. Ted Kennedy, the Lion of the Senate, makes me ill just thinking about him. Here's an older article. Exactly 40 years ago Senator Kennedy was guilty of murder in the death of Mary Jo Kopech in 28. But because of his money and political ties, he got away with it. For those of you who are too young to remember, in the summer of 1969, Kennedy, a married man, attended a bachelor party of men and women on the island of Chappaquiddick in Martha's Vineyard. After drinking all day and into the night, Ted Mary Jo left the party, driving drunk. Kennedy crashed the car into the water. Like a good politician he saved himself but not Mary Jo who drowned inside the car, not bothering to go for help. Heroic Ted said he panicked, swam across the bay and went to his apartment and called his lawyer. Ten hours later. They reported the crime to police. That was just enough time for the alcohol to leave his system, thereby leaving no evidence to prosecute Tipsy Ted for felony murder. Felony murder occurs when a person breaks a law, drunk driving, and causes the death of another. By way of political power and money, the Kennedy family quashed the criminal investigation, and Mary Jo's death was ruled an accident. Then later Kennedy paid the Kopech family a large sum of money not to file a civil lawsuit for negligent homicide. If that had been me or you, we would still be in prison. Let's just say I'm relieved that the mass voters can no longer elect this murderous senator. Ted exemplified the kind of political leader that no nation should ever have. End article. I went through over 800 posts and not one mention of Mr. Rogers. From the names listed here I figured someone had dirt on him too. Kinda makes me feel good there was at least one good person on this planet. My heart skipped a beat thinking you had some unknown dirt. I know this is mainly in my country because propaganda, but Bolivar, the guy was a dictator that didn't actually care for the citizens or the freedom of them. He just wanted to make his dream come true, and that's ignoring all the horrible things he did. XX Temptation. Although he tried to better himself in the end, that dude was many times a complete doucher bag. Lolad tried to better himself. How much can you really do in two years to make up for kidnapping and beating the shout the woman who's carrying your child? The guy who killed Hitler was a bit of an a-hole when he was alive. XX Temptation. When he was killed, there was a barrage of sympathy messages saying he was such a good person for helping out with charity and made such great music. Um, did everyone just forget how he abused his pregnant girlfriend? dealt drugs and was a gang member this guy was not a saint he was a criminal period 
Mother Teresa. She gained millions of followers and even more millions of dollars in her attempt to help and heal the sick and dying. Even when having the money, she would order her followers to reuse needles and other painful treatments. This isn't an exact quote but it was something along the lines of, when people were in horrible pain and about to die and pleading for help she would say she like, you're feeling the pain of Jesus Christ, and then when she got sick and elderly, she didn't want the care of her followers. So she sent herself to an actual hospital where she got legitimate treatment. Andrew Jackson is still on our $20 bill despite being responsible for mass murder. Winston Churchill. Honestly, if he is alive at any other point in human history, he's an incompetent, authoritarian, racist, warmongering sack of fesses. However, he happens to have been born into the exact time and place where all his horrible characteristics could be molded into a situation where it is quite likely he was the best person possible for the job. I take nothing away from him. He is probably the person most responsible for the defeat of fascism and deserves all the credit in the world for it. But he was still an awful person.